All right, uh, let's take a look at example 3.3. So example 3.3 says write a script named sequence that uses a loop to compute the elements of A directly. Uh, and so um, what it's referring to in terms of the elements of A is in the section right above 3.3. Uh, we discuss sequences, and we're looking at this simple sequence uh, here, where the i plus 1th element of A is equal to the i-th or previous element divided by 2. Okay, and so we want to write a script uh, to be able to calculate the i plus 1th element directly. And then as a comparison, we could also compare uh, to the direct solution uh, as given here. Okay, so uh, let's go over to MATLAB and let's do it. Okay, so I want to create a new script, a new script there, uh, and we're told in this case to call it sequence. Okay, so now I have sequence. And so this is a script to compute the um, i plus 1 element of the sequence a of i plus 1 is equal to a of i divided by 2 directly. So initially, in terms of precondition, let's say none. Post condition. A 10 here. In terms of post condition, let's store to ASOL um, the um, uh, 10th element of A. Okay, so for now we'll make it uh, so there's no precondition in terms of specifying which uh, element we compute, we'll just compute the first 10 elements. And so I'm computing element uh, i plus 1. So I'll set the upper bound of i to 9. So if I want the i plus 1 element, it's 10. And then after we, we finish this, we can go ahead and, and generalize it. Okay. Uh, so if I want to go ahead and compute this directly, uh, a of i plus 1 is equal to a of i divided by 2. Okay. So in order to get things started in terms of calculating the next element, uh, we need to first essentially initialize our, our sequence. Uh, so let's initialize it. Um, and say that uh, a is equal to 1. Okay, we'll take the first element to be 1. And then to compute this in terms of a, a for loop, we'll do 4, i is equal to, okay. Uh, how we set it up, we can do it a number of ways um, in terms of how we refer to the index. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and let's loop for i is equal to 1 uh, all the way up to 9, okay. Where 9 will be, you know, we're trying to calculate the i plus 1th element, so this will bring us all the way up to calculating the 10th element. Okay. Alright, so then what do we want to do? Each loop, I want to compute um, a sol, okay, and I'm going to type this in, right? This is a of i plus 1 is equal to a i divided by 2. Okay, so a sol, which is the i plus 1th element of a, okay, so first time through i is equal to 1, so i plus 1th element will correspond to the second element, is equal to the previous value, okay, and actually, I'm just going to call this a, is equal to the previous value divided by 2, okay. All right, and so then, you know, what do we have going on here? Okay, so I initialize my first element as being equal to 1. And I loop for i is equal to 1 to 9. So each iteration I'm calculating the i plus 1th element of a. So first time through my loop, i is equal to 1. So this will correspond to calculating the i plus 1, the second element of a. Okay, so I'm going to assign it. So a is going to be taken as the i plus 1th element. Okay, and then how I compute that is it's the previous value divided by 2. Okay. And so the previous value here, I also use a. Okay. And so what's important here is to keep in mind what's meant by a variable assignment. Okay. When MATLAB encounters this line, it's first going to look at the right-hand side of the equal sign and evaluate what's on the right-hand side. So what's on the right-hand side is a divided by 2. What it uses for a is what's currently stored in a. So first time through, a will be equal to 1. Okay. So it'll take the current value of a divided by 2, 
take the result of that calculation and assign it to A. Okay, so next iteration, when I is equal to 2, and I go to compute the third element, here, right, what's currently assigned, assigned to A is the result of the previous calculation. So it reperforms the calculation and assigns that to A. Okay, so it's much different, or, you know, important to remember that this is, you're going to take the result of this calculation and assign it to this target. Okay, so this is a variable assignment. It's not uh, an equality or anything of that nature, right? So in your math class, you'd say, that is rubbish. Uh, this is an invalid uh, expression. But keep in mind, in MATLAB, it's going to evaluate what's on the right-hand side of this equal sign and assign it to that target, A. Okay, and then since I said uh, a sol is the answer, we'll just assign the final value in a uh, to a sol. Okay, and you know we could clean it up. We could just use a. Um, doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, cool. Okay, uh, and then uh, yeah. So let's just go ahead and run this. Okay, and then we'll add the direct uh, and, and see that we have everything. So if I go ahead and run sequence. Okay, oh, I suppress my output. It's displayed over here is 0 0.002. Let me unsilence it and run it. Uh, so we get an answer of 0 0.0020. Okay. As a comparison, we can calculate this um, uh, indirectly. So if A1 is initially 1, then AI, okay, AI. Uh, is equal to, and this we're, we'll set um, uh, i to 9. Well, we can use i as 9 because that's its value here. a of i is equal to a1 times uh, 1 divided by 2 raised to the uh, i minus 1. Okay, And what I want to better do is let's do n is 10 because I want the 10th element and I'll rewrite that 10. Because it's just a matter of how we had things set up here. Um, we were computing the i plus 1th element. So this corresponds to element 10. In this notation, a of i is a of 1 times 1 half to the i minus 1. Right, that's computing the um, i-th element. So you know, alternatively, n is equal to i plus 1. Right? We just need to shift things. It's just a matter of um, how we're calling um, these things. So if I run it, okay, I get the same result with both my uh, direct and indirect calculation. Hey, excellent. Okay. Uh, so what we could do now is if we want to generalize it, as a precondition, let's specify n, right? And let's make n the nth element we wish to compute. And so a sol then you know, will be the nth element of a. And so all that would correspond to then, for my upper bound, I just make it n minus 1. So parentheses, I'll put n minus 1. It's n minus 1 because I'm shifting my indices uh, up by 1 so I can use the same expression uh, in that calculation. And then this line I can get rid of, okay, uh, because now I've defined n. So if I save that, okay, now I generalize it so we can uh, assign n to 10. Or in sequence, I get the same answer as before. Okay, but if I want to uh, calculate the 20th element, reassign uh, 20 to n, rerun sequence, uh, and you know both calculations are in agreement. There's my updated answer. Uh, life is great, and that's another example of uh, where scripts are advantageous, and that I could uh, use that to to keep uh, running and using things. Okay, cool. Okay, so you can turn me off now if you want. The very last thing I'll mention is, okay, the final result or the desirable result here is ASOL, right? My my post condition. So intermediate variables that are being created that aren't actually used are A, okay, and you know I could just use A as my final answer, um, but this makes clear that you know this is you know the final desired result of what's assigned to ASOL. Um, I as well is in theory an intermediate variable uh, that's not actually used. And so if you want to clean things up, if you're afraid that you're going to use those variables later on and you're going to cause confusion, right? remember you could just add a clear. And if I do A and then um, 
actually a1 and maybe I want to get rid of ai my intermediate calc or my uh, indirect calculation that's just for comparison in i yeah I could do it now if I look over here in my workspace all right I run it and all that's going to exist is n which is already defined as my precondition and then asol uh, what I said was my post condition okay cool all right